An overview of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verse 14, through chapter 12, verse 12, by the finger of God. We are now in the fifth section of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus' journey to death, messianic signs and teaching. Jesus proves greater than the devil. We shall examine this section under ten titles, Jesus greater than demons, then doctrine, then dogma, then darkness, then duties, then deceit, then duplicity, then death, then dread, then doubt. Jesus is greater than demons. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of the demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. The name Beelzebul in other texts appears as Baal Zebub, Belial, Biliar, Mastema, Samuel, the prince of the demons. Judean accusations against Jesus and his apostles doing miracles by Satan's power continued through the second century. So, just what are demons? Some suggest that this is mere psychosis. Others, rebel angels, or human ghosts, bodiless creatures, impure spirits, or the souls of drowned Nephilim. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Now if I drive out demons by Elzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But since I drive out demons by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, this name Beelzebul is built upon the ancient name Baal, which in Hebrew and cognate languages can be translated Lord, Master, Husband, or Boss, and is often hyphenated, such as Baalzebul, who was a Philistine god whose name translates Lord of the Heavenly Dwelling. But in the Hebrew Bible, this is modified to form an insult, translating Lord of the Flies, also attested in Ugaritic and in the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, since flies were known to carry disease. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone greater attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. Now, several interpretations have been offered for this text. Some suggest that the strong man represents human beings who have given in to temptation and therefore have been invaded by a stronger demon. Others suggest that the strong man is Satan, and that the stronger man is Jesus, who overpowers the devil and demons, setting humans free. Others suggest that Jesus was addressing religious leaders who were ruling over folk until Jesus came to set folk free from religion. The second suggestion may be the best. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house that I left. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. We note that religions try to reform folk, sometimes by expelling demons, other times through counseling or acts of repentance. This often provides temporary relief. 
However, impure spirits or harmful habits can return, sometimes stronger than before. God's Holy Spirit comes and lives in those who put their faith in Jesus such that those spirits cannot return. Jesus is greater than doctrine. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. But Jesus replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. What doctrine is expressed here? Blessed is the mother. Some call this veneration. In fact, there are some churches that pray to Mary, Jesus' mother. In fact, Mary herself had declared, All generations will call me blessed. To really venerate Mary, we should obey her commands. But she only commanded one thing when she said, Do whatever Jesus tells you. And Jesus himself countered this doctrine by saying, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Jesus is greater than dogma, that is, established inflexible teachings. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites, so also will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Ninevites had learned how Jonah had disappeared for three days under the sea and now had returned alive. So, the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. Then, the Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom, and now something greater than Solomon is here. Now, remember, Jonah was believed to have been swallowed by a great fish for three days. Then Nineveh City's population repented when Jonah warned them of God's wrath. The Queen of Sheba came to Jerusalem to learn wisdom from King Solomon. How much more should we pay heed to Jesus' warnings and learn from him? For Jesus makes himself greater than both Jonah and Solomon. Oh, by the by, the Ninevites and the Queen herself were all Gentiles. This would be especially disturbing to those listening to Jesus. Jesus is greater than darkness. No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it will be hidden or under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand so that those who come in may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eyes are unhealthy, your body is also full of darkness. See to it, then, that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light, and no part of it dark, it will be just as full of light as when a lamp shines its light on you. What are unhealthy eyes? The Hebrew of Proverbs 28.22 reads, A man with an evil eye hastens after riches. A man with an evil eye hastens after riches. Now, the Greek for unhealthy here implies stingy. Jesus condemned those who leveraged religion to gain economic advantage over others. Today, of course, it is primarily politicians and bankers who seek to impose global governance by leveraging finance and money supplies. Jesus is greater than duties. Jesus often had lively discussions with conservative religious folk. 
When Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee invited him to eat with him. So he went in and reclined at the table. But the Pharisee was surprised when he noticed that Jesus did not first wash before the meal. To wash off uncleanness was considered a duty. When Jesus went outside, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to oppose him fiercely and to besiege him with questions, waiting to catch him in something he might say. Now, in ministerial circles, such chaps are affectionately called doctrine inspectors, for they are constantly listening for errors in others' messages and teachings, that is, anything inconsistent with their own theology. All religions require you to perform rituals, to keep rules, and to share your riches with their leaders. Jesus, however, releases us from hell after death, from our bad habits during our lifetime, and from religious requirements. He is greater than duplicity, as yeast in a loaf of bread. When a crowd of many thousands had gathered, so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the air in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs, or from rooftops. Now, what is hypocrisy but pretending to be something that we know is not real? This is different from being a weak example of what we are. Now, if you become a secret Christian, then eventually others will find out. If it is dangerous to become a Christian, then baptize new believers in secret and let the Lord decide when they should become exposed, if ever. Jesus is greater than death. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, Fear him. Who is this one who can both kill and throw into hell? It is God himself. Scripture gives no power to Satan to throw you into hell. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid for you are worth more than many sparrows. A word about death. Yahweh God created us to live with him forever. Our ancestors, however, chose to obey the devil, causing physical death for all human beings. Nevertheless, if we repent and obey God, then he forgives us, promising to raise us to life some day at the resurrection of the dead. Jesus himself died and rose back to life, showing that there really is life after death. However, for those who refuse Christ, there will be a second death, being separated from God forever. If that's what you want, that's what you will get. Jesus is greater than our dread. I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. 
now son of man, is a title drawn from Daniel chapter 7 and applied to the promised Messiah who was to become king over the world forever. That being the case, one can easily misunderstand the phrase son of man, and so this is forgivable. The Holy Spirit was generally believed to be Yahweh's invisible spirit come into the world. And so to worship another God in place of the Holy Creator God requires repentance. But to consciously, purposefully scorn or disparage the Holy Creator God may prove a one-way road to being scorned in turn forever. Jesus is greater than our doubts, for example, when brought chained before a magistrate. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. So, how can we hear from the Holy Spirit? One way is to listen to gifted teachers. Another, to read the Bible carefully. Asking for wisdom and expecting insight. Try to sense needs and solutions to those needs. You may have a dream, a vision, or a lively imagination through which God can reveal to you the wisdom you require. So, as a word of advice, Never violate know in truth or your conscience, for the Holy Spirit will never deny the word of God, nor tempt you to do evil. And always honor Jesus by obeying his commands above all else. And let others critique your ideas. They may find them godly, or they may not. So, what did you discover from this passage of Scripture today? What truths could you affirm? What promises of God could you claim? What commands of Jesus will you obey? Your assignment for next time is to read the rest of Luke chapter 12 in different translations, visit the website, whilst you compile your own insights, queries, and observations to share with others.